to everyone. Uh, so welcome to MNJ22403, or formerly known, uh, the code is, or code was 3N32432 thermodynamics 2. Um, my name is Anas, and I'll be giving today's briefing uh, on uh, this course. Okay. All right, uh, so before we begin our briefing, uh, let's have a look on the checklist uh, on what uh, we plan to cover on this session. Okay. Um, so these are the list of items that I hope uh, we could cover in this session uh, before we begin our uh, official class or lecture. Okay, so for this course, uh, the coordinator is Associate Professor IRTS Dr. Nasrul Amri Muhammad Amin. He is uh, an Associate Professor with the Mechanical Engineering Program and I'll be assisting him uh, as the lecturer as well for this course. Uh, again, my name is Anas Abdurrahman and I'm a senior lecturer with the uh, Mechanical Engineering Program. So, um, these are the information uh, for, for the lecturers as well as for the coordinator. If you need any uh, guides or any questions regarding this course, uh, feel free to drop us uh, an email. So, the emails are stated on the screen. Uh, as for Dr. Nasrul Amri, the details uh, regarding um, his contact hours, office hour, or other details relevant to him uh, will be provided in due time. Uh, as everyone are aware, uh, the schedule for our class are as follows. So we will have the asynchronous session. Uh, SWOT, uh, SWOT, uh, the SWOT uh, was provided for us is on uh, Monday, 9 until 10 o'clock uh, in the evening. We will have our uh, synchronous lecture on Friday, 10 uh, until 12 o'clock. Uh, but please always uh, be aware uh, the, of any changes that might happen because the timetable is yet to be finalized. Okay? So they might uh, might change our schedule, but as of uh, on this uh, day, Monday, on the which is 18th today, uh, this is the uh, slot or the timetable provided uh, for our course. Okay? And the rest um, uh, colored in the yellow uh, region. That's for our lab uh, as well as the tutorial session. So roughly we have five uh, separate groups, uh, which we are going to have uh, for the tutorial, tutorial as well as for the lab session. Okay, um, so as uh, everyone is aware, before we go into details on the course of the course, we should understand the target uh, of what is the objective of learning uh, this, uh, this course? Okay, uh, so first one, the course outcome, the CO1 is ability to create solution for problems in gas, vapor, and combined power cycles, each in the applications. Um, so uh, the first uh, CO, uh, basically we are going to deal with gas uh, uh, power cycle, as well as uh, vapor and combined power cycle. Um, possible assessments are uh, as, as stated over here. We have assignment, quiz, labs, and also examinations. For CO2, uh, is about uh, the ability to create a solution for problems in refrigeration and air conditioning cycle. And the assessment or possible assessments are as stated over here. So uh, after you learn gas, vapor, and combat power cycle in CO2, we are going to move into the, uh, the details of re refrigeration cycle. And the last CO or cost, cost outcome for this, uh, for this uh, class is the ability to analyze the problem chemical reactions, adiabatic flame temperature, and phase equilibrium. Okay. So, as you can see over here, the complexity as well as the assessments are given uh, to basically to give you some idea of the expectation or how the assessments will be formulated. So for example, uh, C6, that's the highest cognitive level, meaning that um, we expect all the questions in the test or maybe in the final 
uh, requires uh, critical thinking or solutions or creating solutions from students. Uh, that's for CO1 and CO2. P4 here, this is a psychomotor, which refers to the lab component before and uh, for CO1 and CO2. So that's for the lab component P4. As for CO3, uh, the cognitive level is up until C4 uh, because this is the latest or revised uh, cost outcome uh, compared to the previous years. So uh, previously we have CO3 up at 66, but it has been revised uh, to uh, to basically to cater or to uh, uh, to evaluate assess stu uh, student up until the cognitive level of four. Okay, so six is the highest. Uh, four is up until analysis. Uh, okay, so uh, according to the uh, record on the cost registration, we have 119 students registered uh, for MMJ 22403 uh, up until uh, 9 o'clock on Monday, 18th of October 2021. Uh, so this list uh, will definitely change uh, for the next one or two weeks. So I'm not too concerned, uh, but um, I think more importantly is the uh, invitation that was sent uh, on the Google uh, Classroom. So basically, all the information, uh, lecture notes, everything will be provided uh, on this platform. Okay. So up until now, we have 150 students. So um, if you know some of your friends who are yet to join, to enroll in this Google Classroom uh, platform, uh, please let them know as soon as possible. Okay, so before we begin, uh, just a, just a uh, uh, have a look at this meme. Okay, All right. When you're having too much time during the semester, okay, but still pass through, and you will meet again the same lecturer who's teaching the same subject in the new semester. If you have too much fun over the semester, right? Okay, um, so uh, before we go even further uh, into discussing the, the course, so the, que the first question that you should ask yourself is about the eligibility uh, to enroll in this course. Okay, uh, as you understand that Thermo 2 basically is um, the continuation from Thermo 1 and uh, Thermo 1 has been set uh, to be the prerequisite course uh, in order for you, basically you need to pass Thermo 1 in order for you to proceed uh, to Thermo 2. So some of the questions uh, that commonly asked by student, basically if you brought C- minus or D+, plus, which is conditional pass for Thermo 1, is it okay for you to proceed uh, to taking this course Thermo 2? Okay, so the answer is basically uh, you are allowed, okay? uh, based on the system, if you got conditional pass, it's still considered pass if you got a CDP of 2 and above. Okay? So you can still basically proceed with Thermo 2. Okay? Uh, but if you are still confused, uh, as, as always, uh, consult your RPS as soon as possible uh, at the start of the semester. Do not wait until the, uh, too late. Always consult with your RPS if you are not sure whether you are allowed or if you can proceed with the subsequent courses in like Thermo 1 and Thermo 2. Okay. Uh, but uh, for me, I want to emphasize over here is that you will be using the knowledge that you have uh, gained or that you have learned in Thermo 1 in Thermo 2 again extensively if I can emphasize on that. Okay? So the knowledge that you have gained that, that was covered okay, in Thermo 1 will be used extensively in Thermo 2. Right? So my advice to you, uh, discuss with your RPS. Uh, yes, uh, you, uh, you are allowed to proceed with Thermo 2 if you got conditional pass, which is C minus and D plus. Uh, but just have a discussion with your RPS whether uh, whether you are okay to proceed with Thermo 2, even you are allowed to proceed. Okay? Uh, because sometimes um, students uh, have difficulty uh, 
to to basically to understand the materials covered in Termo 2 because the foundation or uh, their fundamentals are still not strong enough uh, from Termo 1. Okay? So uh, as a lecturer, uh, we will not uh, basically block or we will not stop you from taking Termo 2. In fact, I welcome everyone who, is, who are interested to join uh, this course, Termo 2. But uh, always have a discussion with your RPS uh, whether you think you are prepared or with, whether you are ready uh, to proceed with Termo 2 uh, based on the result or based on the knowledge that you gain from Termo 1. All right, so just a quick highlight. Uh, I think everyone uh, are aware of this new uh, condition uh, for passing the course, and this has been set by the university. So effective from 2019-2020 uh, uh, session, uh, all students basically need to pass the final exam, which is basically you need to get 40% or above uh, in order for you to pass the course. So meaning that, uh, for example, previously, if students uh, basically fail the final, basically let's say they got 20% out of 100, but uh, because of the coursework, it helps push their grades. Maybe they got conditional pass okay, or maybe C. Okay? So they, they pass the course. But starting with the uh, with this new regulation, it means basically you need to get 40 and above out of 100 in the final before you can be considered as, or before you are considered passing the course. Okay? So it doesn't matter what your coursework is, whether they are high, very, very high, you think it can help you? No. Okay? So you need to pass the final exam in order for you to pass this course. Okay. Um, all right. So just a quick uh, reminder. Basically, we will be using a lot of first law, second law, pure substance, uh, which basically requires the interpolation from the property tables. We will be relying on the PV, TV diagram, as well as idle gases. Okay. Um, so to help you with this, I have posted uh, a few practice problems uh, to help you recap what you have learned in Term 1. So please have a look at the materials that was posted in Google Classroom and hopefully uh, give it a go and to basically to just to recap your, your memory. This recap or these practice problems will not be graded, will not be collected. You, have, you don't have to submit them. Uh, I posted or I give it to you for the sole purpose to help you basically refresh your memories and be prepared be prepared on what uh, we are going to cover in this course okay. <clears throat> as for the medium of communication uh, or basically uh, the course materials where you are going to find it uh, we will be relying on the google classroom platform extensively so all the materials um, regarding this course will be posted uh, on this platform so that's why this is very, very important for students to join this uh, platform as soon as, pos as, soon as possible. Uh, so if you have a group, a WhatsApp group uh, among your cohort, uh, please let them know uh, the, the importance of uh, this uh, platform if they are yet to enroll. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the program has taken the uh, approach basically to uh, collect all the links uh, to the platform that all the courses uh, are using. So there should be no excuse for students to say that they do not know uh, how to join the, uh, the, the platform or the classroom. Okay? So please uh, let uh, your friends know if they are yet to enroll uh, in our uh, Google Classroom. Okay, uh, and I would like to emphasize over here as I put the comments next to the, to the link that was shared. It is very, very important for students to use the official Unimap Gmail account to join this class. Okay. Uh, so far, uh, I've seen uh, most of the students, uh, I would say 99% of the students basically join using the uh, official uh, account. So thank you, uh, everyone. Um, but um, there are, I think, one, just one or two uh, names that uh, I detected uh, in the uh, list of the people, uh, list of students. 
they they are not using the official Unimed account to enroll for this class. So for those, uh, for example, Daniel Afik, uh, this was from last week. Right? I'm not sure whether he has rejoined using the official account or not. So for example, if you are not using the official account, the Unimed account, please uh, unenroll and then enroll again using the Unimed account. Okay, so this is because uh, most of the assessment, like uh, the quizzes, assignment, exams, uh, sorry, not exam, uh, quizzes, uh, assignments, labs, they will be submitted to this platform and uh, the grades will be given based on uh, the, the account, basically. So uh, it's important to have the right name and the right account okay, instead of using your uh, unofficial account. Okay, um, okay, so as for this semester, we are still uh, implementing the hybrid system, uh, which basically combines the synchronous and asynchronous teaching. Um, but as per guideline by the university as well as the faculty, um, right now the lecture uh, we are still uh, will still be uh, conducted uh, by an online system or hybrid system for the lecture. But for the tutorial and lab, uh, they will be uh, synchronous, meaning that face to face uh, teaching. Uh, as well as for the test and exam. So uh, starting from this semester, uh, since we are moving from pandemic to endemic phase, um, the university is encouraging uh, all the courses uh, to take uh, or to approach the PNP, teaching and learning, uh, to integrate uh, via synchronous and asynchronous. So for this course, we will have our lecture online, but for tutorial, lab, test, and exam, they are all will be conducted via face-to-face -face, uh, approach. Okay. okay. All right, so as for the course, uh, so uh, from the COs just now, basically, if we can summarize what we're going to learn in this course, it can be summarized as the, uh, as the following. So this course uh, provides the advanced analysis of the thermodynamic cycles for engineering applications. Emphasis will be given to the gas power cycles, vapor power cycles, refrigeration cycles, gas vapor mixtures, air conditioning, uh, chemical reaction, and phase equilibrium. These cycles are classified as power and refrigeration cycles. Complex engineering problem solving will be focused for industry and everyday life applications. All right, so all the importance, uh, key, uh, all the importance keywords uh, has, uh, basically I underline all of them, the important keywords, for example, advanced analysis, okay, thermodynamic cycles, basically continuation from number one, and the one that is highlighted, uh, highlighted in yellow, that's for CO1, cost outcome number one, uh, the green one cost outcome number two and the blue one the blue uh, the blue highlight uh, highlight highlighters uh, refers to the third co okay so as you can see over here we are going to focus on complex engineering problem solving okay so that's why we have the highest cognitive level shown just now c6 or co1 and co2 okay so this uh, problem solving uh, will basically be focused for uh, the industry and everyday life applications. All right, so I think this is quite important for everyone to be aware of. Um, for the syllabus and the teaching plan, um, they are as stated on the screen, but I'm just going to highlight a few important notes. Uh, for example, they give you the plan. Uh, so I would like to highlight over here, this is tentative or the plan, uh, the teaching plan meaning that it might change over uh, this semester if needed to be, okay? But as of now, uh, I'll, uh, I'll try uh, to basically to follow the guidelines as stated over here. Okay, so the important things is, for example, you need to understand or you need to look at is on the activities. So, for example, we'll have our first tutorial in week three, 
and then our plan lab, the first one, uh, which is in week four, as well as our first quiz uh, assignment, then in week six, okay, and so on and so forth. So you can see over here, right? And then we will have our uh, test. If I'm not mistaken, okay, I can go back. Our test is planned on week seven, which is just before the holiday, the winter break. Okay, so we'll have our second lab after the winter break, and then the second assignment as well as please okay all right so the details uh on the or the synopsis or the description of the the topics that uh, they are going to be covered okay they are listed over here you, so you can have a look all right okay um all right so this basically this is the uh, calendar uh, released by the university Okay, so basically we are going to follow this calendar to the letter. Uh, we will have seven weeks of lectures uh, before your midterm break. Okay, and after midterm break, we will have another uh, the remaining seven uh, weeks. So, but importantly, uh, there are two important dates that you need to keep in your calendar. Right? First one is regarding the first test, which will be conducted uh, on week seven, as I mentioned just now. So. The date has been set, which is on the December 2nd, uh, 2021, which is on Thursday. Uh, the venue is at Dewan Pulia, BK3 and BK4, uh, at night, which is uh, half past nine until 11 o'clock. So please make sure you put this in your calendar. Okay. So the next day, uh, uh, after the test, we are going to have our industrial visiting lecturer. Okay. Basically, uh, for our course, uh, there will be a one slot, a two hour slot where we invite uh, industrial uh, lecture, basically people from the industry to give talks or lecture on basically uh, their work in the industry that is very, very related to the topics covered uh, in our course. Okay? So, uh, so please keep these two important dates in your calendar. So the, for the industrial visiting lecturer, it will be uh, after your test, basically, uh, you have your test on Thursday, and then the uh, lecture will be given on Friday uh, during the uh, 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 synchronous session. Okay. All right. For the test, it will be conducted face to face, meaning that you have to come uh, physically uh, to DK3 and DK4 to take the test. Uh, for the lecture, Okay, it will be conducted during the synchronous session, meaning that it will be conducted online. Right now, uh, I have to emphasize this, and it's very, very important that students understand this. Um, I understand that our class is on Friday, it just before the midterm break, okay, basically the last Friday before midterm break. And most of the students basically already had plans, okay, they uh, tends to buy tickets early in the semester, uh, uh, basically to go back to their hometown. Okay, now, because of the schedule given to us, okay, so that's why uh, I've made this uh, uh, schedule uh, and I share it with you during the first session of the semester to give you a heads up so that you can make plans accordingly before the midterm break. So for test one, it is on Thursday. And for the uh, industrial visiting lecturer, it is on uh, Friday. And they are both, of course, compulsory okay, for all students to attend. Okay? So they, there will be no excuse that you have no idea that this is the plan or you have a lecture or a test just before midterm break. So, <clears throat> uh, of course, for test one, uh, they will be graded. You have, uh, they will be con uh, contributed. Uh, the grades will contribute to your, to your CGPA uh, in the semester. Um, so, as for the le uh, industry business lecture lecturer, I will conduct a quiz on that to make sure that all students attend uh, the session. So please make sure you plan 
your schedule properly, your journey home, okay, so that it will not clash or, uh, or you will have problems uh, happen in these uh, two events. Okay. All right, so as for the cost materials, uh, we, we will be using thermodynamics and engineering approach by Junos, Chenna, uh, and Microbowls. Um, so basically, it doesn't matter uh, which version you are going to use, or even if you have an older version textbook. Uh, as long as you have a textbook, it should be okay. So, uh, do you need a textbook? My my answer is yes. Uh, it will be almost impossible for you to study without a textbook. Uh, so the good thing is, uh, I think you you have or you must own one textbook before from term one. So we'll just be uh, you'll just continue using the same book, okay? Because the topics that we're going to cover in this course is basically continuation in the topics uh, in this textbook from term one. Okay. <coughs> All right. So these are some of other materials that you can refer to or you can use uh, as part of our course. All right. As for the assessment. Uh, for the assessments, they are as listed on the screen. We'll have a uh, final examination, which basically contributes 60% of the overall grade. Um, and then we will have continuous assessment, such as the assignments, the quizzes, uh, lab reports, and tests. Okay, so for, uh, for example, assignments, uh, we may have about two assignments this semester. And for laboratories, uh, we will have two, inshallah. And for the quizzes, uh, it might be three or more. Okay, so it can be a combination of plant or impromptu, uh, impromptu quizzes. Okay, so please uh, understand that the large chunk of your grades basically comes from the final examination. So as I mentioned early in the presentation, uh, if you want to pass this course or any courses, uh, you need to score 40% uh, or above out of 100 okay, in the final examination. Okay? Otherwise, even though your uh, continuous assessment or your uh, coursework helps you in pushing your grades, but as long as your final examination Below uh, 40, you will not pass uh, this course. Okay, so that's for you to uh, understand. Okay, uh, so again, uh, this is the planning uh, for this semester, uh, which is quite similar to the teaching plan that I showed just now. So, but this is more details. Uh, again, this is plan or tentative, so it might change uh, as we go on in the semester, but hopefully, uh, it will follow loosely what is planned over here. So, for example, these are the planned um, tutorials uh, at, at the corresponding weeks. Uh, assignments, two assignments, we'll have tests and final at the end. Then we have lectures, synchronous, asynchronous, and then quizzes. Okay. Um, okay. As for this semester, uh, I will cover the first five weeks, uh, which is the CO1. And then Dr. Nasrul Amri will continue uh, from week six uh, and beyond, uh, which covers uh, CO2 and CO3. Okay. Uh, as for the tips, I have uploaded a few documents in the uh, Google Classroom. So please have a look, for example, what are the objectives or the important topics uh, that uh, the basically the highlights of each chapter. So please have a look in the learning objectives. And then I also uh, shared uh, comments that I have uh, basically highlighted or summarized for the past uh, two uh, courses. So, for the, so basically I summarized one for 2018, 2019, and the other one is for 2019 and 2020. Basically, uh, the key points or what I noticed uh, when I uh, graded uh, the quizzes, uh, tests, and also assignments. Okay? Uh, some of them might not be relevant. For example, uh, last last time when I taught uh, the more two 
was during the pandemic, uh, which is basically online PNP. So most of my comments are related to the online assessment. Okay, so if it's not um, related to the our situation right now, so please ignore them. But generally, uh, the content or the substance uh, are there. Basically, what what is the expectation? What how to not uh, how not to repeat the mistakes made by your seniors? Basically, okay. So I hope uh, you can spend some time. Uh, to go to the uh, the notes uh, to understand what is the expectation okay, from the lecturers uh, on the students okay? um, because if you avoid the mistakes done by your your seniors you should do you should be doing okay uh, in this course right sometimes uh, small mistakes or silly mistakes uh, done by your seniors basically they have a huge impact uh, on the the grades or assessments all right. Um, okay. And one more thing. Uh, if you notice um, that uh, in the Google Classroom, if you have time to go to uh, the materials that I've uploaded, is quite a lot. Okay. So it's up to you whether you want to to do more about the courses or not. Okay. You can just spend your time to go to the lectures, the synchronous, synchronous, and that's it. Uh, you don't have to go beyond that if you want. But it's all up to you. But if you want to do well in this course, uh, you want to learn from the mistakes, uh, or you want to learn more uh, than, is, than what is covered, then please go all the materials uh, that was basically that were carefully selected for you okay, to help you understand uh, the content of this course better. Okay. All right. So for the lab, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it will be conducted face to face. Uh, we have. Uh, two labs, which is the master boiler as well as the food pump. And for the labs, the details will be provided uh, once we get uh, closer to the week uh, of the lab. And the location for the lab will be two more than this lab. Uh, my advice for you, because we have changed the uh, we have changed the syllabus, basically, we update the syllabus, we revise them. So never rely on your series or old templates. So this basically is the common problems that, that we face every semester. Uh, students basically just copy and paste seniors uh, template without even looking at the latest questions or the latest uh, items uh, required from the students uh, on that particular course or semester. So uh, I give you the warning, uh, never or never ever use your seniors template uh, for submission. Um, all right, as for the attendance, uh, the attendance, at least for my part, will be compulsory uh, for both synchronous and asynchronous. So to ensure that students attend, especially for the uh, asynchronous session, um, basically a short quiz or a Google form survey will be given to you uh, for you to answer. So the Google form or the quiz is basically compulsory uh, as a form of attendance. So if you did not attend or you did not uh, fill up the uh, Google form or the Google survey, so it means you did not attend because I will only base my data, my uh, uh, attendance data based on the data collected uh, from the quiz or survey that uh, was submitted by students. So even if you watch the video that I was uh, that uh, I'm going to share, or the materials that I I submit, if you did not uh, fill up the uh, the survey or the quiz, then you will be considered as absent. So please make sure it's important for you to fill up the quiz. Okay. Um, usually for this for the asynchronous, which is on Monday uh, 9, uh, 9 p.m. at night. Uh, usually, I will give uh, ample time for students. So basically, you have uh, to submit the quiz just before the Friday session. Okay, and for Friday session, usually you have to submit before uh, five o'clock uh, on Friday. Okay, so so that you have uh, ample time to view the video that uh, or synchronous asynchronous materials on Monday up until uh, Thursday, and then on Thursday, right after the uh, the uh, the session, the synchronous session, you will have to fill up the 
which the quiz will be very, very short. It's more like to test the knowledge, uh, what was covered in the in the lecture to make sure that you really attended uh, the, the, uh, the session. Okay. Um, okay, so all right, this is good. So this is why it's important for you to use um, official account on the Google Classroom because all form, all form of, of assessments will be uh, conducted on that platform using the uh, official email account. Okay, um, so before we go further, just to give you some highlights or some uh, feel what is expected uh, from this course. Okay, so if you can see over here, uh, if we can just focus on the, uh, the last part here, the overall uh, result. Okay, so this is for 2016 and 17. Uh, roughly about 33% student who failed, uh, failed this course, right? Okay, but if you look at the examination, it's actually 40% who failed, okay? but 8% still managed to get passed because of the coursework. It helps push the grades up. Okay, similarly, for 2017, 44% actually failed the final, but it, uh, they were helped by the coursework that, that pushed the grade up and Basically, about what 12 13 percent students uh, basically were safe due to the coursework. So, for 2018 19, you can see that uh, the fail rate is about 25 percent. So, again, higher fail, failure rate in the final, but uh, because of the coursework that helped uh, push the grades or the assessment up, then only 25 students will fail. Okay, but if you look over here, okay, if I go back. So generally, uh, about 30, 30%, 30, 30, about, about 25 to 30% students basically failed this course. So let's say if we have 100 students, generally based on the data, about 30 or maybe 40% of the students, uh, 40, sorry, about 25 to 30 students usually will get C minus uh, and below. Okay. So just remember C minus and below is considered as failed. Okay, but conditional pass if your CGPA is above two. Okay, so about 25 to 30% of the students usually uh, uh, will be in this category. Okay, now, in 2019, where the system um, was implemented, where you must pass the final exam before you can pass the course. Okay, this is important. If you can see the, the statistic over here, uh, out of 108 students, 60% basically uh, got C minus and below. Right. Remember, usually the overall grade will be better because they were helped by the coursework. Okay. But because of the system that we implement, uh, that we implement, students need to pass the final because the finals here, okay, for example, for those who got F and D minus. That's considered as fail, as well as for uh, for those who got D. Okay. D plus, if I'm not mistaken, is 40. So these two these two regions or these two groups, they are same. Okay. But those who got D, D minus, and F, okay, this basically is automatic fail because they did not pass the requirements set by the university, which is basically you need to get 40% or above in the final. So from 60%, Basically, those who fail are about 45%. So if you see here, there is a, an obvious increase. Okay, previously, go back about 30, 25%. Now, the failure rate okay, for this semester was about 45%, an increase of about 15%. So keep in mind, your coursework will not help you that much. Your finals, which is 60% of your grade, will determine whether you pass or not the course. Okay, so please keep that in mind. All right, so some of the comments given by your uh, seniors. Uh, basically, in general, the comments are about the cycles. We are going to cover a lot of cycles, uh, gas, vapor, combined, uh, and then refrigeration cycles. So all type of cycles, and then you have to understand uh, the distinction or the difference between them. So. For example, if I give you a plot, 
it, what does this cycle refers to? How can we improve the cycles, for example? So you need to understand uh, the identity of these cycles. Otherwise, it will be very, very difficult for you uh, to solve the problem scheme. Okay. Uh, so the among the uh, suggestions, um, okay, basically to increase uh, to to increase or to give more exercise or problem solving. Okay, so you have to understand. Uh, I, or of course, uh, I pay attention to the uh, to the basically feedback received, uh, but the lecture will be focused on lecturing, meaning that that we are going to cover uh, the materials. Okay, but of course, I will give one or two examples of the for for each topic or subsections that we learn. Okay, but majority of the questions will be covered during tutorial, so that's why it's important for you to bring questions to the tutorial. If you've got any questions, any issues, please make sure to ask during tutorial. Uh, do not use tutorial sessions to basically to solve problems. If you uh, basically use have a set of problems, okay, but you never tried or attempted to, to solve the problem beforehand, then you're going to use the tutorial session to solve them. Then you are not going to ask any questions during this uh, during the tutorial sessions, which is a waste. Okay, basically, during the tutorial sessions, uh, I will not be teaching, basically. I will be answering questions. So that's why it's important for students to bring questions to the tutorial so that we can discuss and then to clarify any issues that you may have okay, in the class. Um, so I think this is quite common, everyone will understand. Uh, what we know is basically just a bit of just the tip of the iceberg. Okay? Basically, what we don't know is the one at the bottom. Okay? We, we have so much to cover. So it's, almost, it's always uh, impossible to cover everything in the class. Okay, so that's why I shared all those, those additional materials to help you catch up and to help you uh, get something uh, from this course. Okay. Um, as why you, you should care about Thermo 2, okay, of course, first, uh, you, uh, it comes from Thermo 1, the foundation. And then from Thermo 1, uh, we go into this following bracket, which is uh, in the energy division. We have thermo to free, uh, free mechanics and heat transfer. And from this, basically, it will decide your interest uh, on the elective, okay, which you can choose from IC engine, air conditioning, renewable energy, or CFT. Okay. Or more importantly, it relates to the final year project. Basically, if you want to choose or if you want to do a final year project that relates to thermodynamics or air conditioning, you need to have a strong foundation in thermodynamic principles or fundamentals. Okay? Otherwise, it will be very, very difficult uh, for you in your final examination. Uh, sorry, final year project, if I okay? uh, So we covered this. It is important for you to remember the basics that, we, that was learned in term one. Okay? Uh, everyone understand this, but I'm sure you know, but it's very difficult to implement unless you do it by yourself. So basically, to uh, to to be uh, to get or to be active uh, in learning, you need to do basically instead of just listen. So you can listen all the tutorials, you can listen to the videos, you can listen to the uh, YouTube uh, session, the lectures. But if you don't do the uh, practice problems, you don't try to solve the problems by, your, by yourself, then you will never learn uh, properly. Okay, because looking at the solution might be easy. You can search the solution online. Okay, every every student uh, do that. Okay, but a good students basically will do first and then check the answers uh, with the uh, with the solutions that they find online. Okay, so that's what's differentiate between good uh, and average student. So similarly over here, after two weeks uh, of lectures, basically you will only uh, remember ten percent of what you read. 20% of what you hear and 30% of what you see. Okay, but to really, really understand to do well in this course or any other courses, you need to say and do, meaning that you need to practice. Okay, I've given you the practice problem, I've given you example problems, but if you don't try to attempt them, then you'll not you'll not be learning uh, anything basically. Okay. 
uh, all right, some house rules. Uh, if you need to get in touch with me, uh, please drop me an email. Uh, as for Dr. Nama, he will uh, he will explain in detail later uh, his preferences. Okay. Um, okay. For the first week, it's important for you to fill up uh, the attendance form. Okay. Basically, after you watch this video, uh, please fill up the form. Basically, that's the proof that you have watched the video. So in the form, uh, you will ask basically to fill up uh, your handphone number as well as your RPS name. So please do that. And the attendance, uh, the, the data, where the, uh, the attendance list will be updated from time to time. So please make sure you check if there is uh, any problems. The, for example, if you attended one of the sessions, but it was not updated properly, so please let me know. And for example, in this case, uh, since the class or the, um, the lecture will be conducted online, so you shouldn't have any issues uh, of coming late. Basically, you just basically switch on uh, your laptop or your phone and then just attend the class. Okay. Um, if you have any issues uh, regarding the submission of the assignments, please discuss with me if you need an extension. Okay. Never, uh, my advice is always discuss with your supervisor. Sorry, I'm sorry, supervisor. Please discuss with your lecturer or coordinator uh, if you've got any issues okay do not keep quiet and do, uh, when you did not submit the assessment for example uh, assignments it's about 10 percent of your grade quizzes it's about another 10 percent of your grade so if you did not attend the uh, quizzes or did not submit the assignments it will have an influence on the uh, outcome of your grade okay, so always have a discussion with your uh, coordinator or myself if you have any problems submitting the uh, assessment okay um okay, i think this is quite uh, common uh, we'll be using back uh, a lot of thermodynamics principle from thermo one and the one that i want to highlight over here is about plagiarism hopefully you understand that plagiarism is uh, a form of academic dishonesty uh, that is or that has a very very serious repercussion in university so if you copy and paste something and submit them as uh, as your own okay so you will face the consequences okay so uh, i go back please make sure you understand that plagiarism will not be tolerated in this course um okay uh, about her writing uh, i implore i would like to ask your cooperation Please write nicely in the quiz, uh, in the assessment quizzes, uh, in the test, uh, assignments, final exam especially. Please make sure they are readable. Okay? Otherwise, myself and Dr. Nam uh, Dr. Nasrul Amri will have very difficult time uh, to mark or to grade uh, your, your assessment. Okay? Uh, trust me, as a human, feels this definitely will have an impact on how we view uh, your answers okay so remember you have a lot of uh, space in your final uh, uh, test uh, in terms of the booklet so use the space uh, wisely okay don't cramp everything even in your quiz or your assessment use the space wisely okay uh, separate between question number one a and b for example or even question one and two do not mix everything together and arrange your answers uh, accordingly so that it's easier for the reviewer, which is the panels or the uh, lecturers, to check your answers. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is an example of plagiarism, a blatant or obvious plagiarism, basically by students. Okay. Uh, just remember, the lecturers know students have access to solution, whether it's from online uh, or from uh, seniors or other sources that maybe we are not even aware of. But we do know that you have access to some of the solutions uh, available uh, for some of the courses offered. Okay. But why do we, why the lecturers, for example, myself, will keep on giving uh, several 
uh, questions from the book, knowing that students have access to the uh, solution. Okay, the answer is simple. First, it is a form of an exercise. If I give it to you as uh, in the assignment, for example, okay, it is so that you will take that seriously and try to solve the problem by yourself. Even if you have solutions to refer to, at least when you write it down, basically you will remember what you wrote down and then you at least you get something from the exercise. That's one. And secondly, not all of the um, assessment will be graded. For example, quizzes, as I said to you, they will be impromptu and planned quiz. Some of the quizzes will not be even graded, uh, will not even be graded. Similarly, some of the assignments that, that was uh, that might be given, or questions, not even assignment questions, uh, that might be given is for the sole purpose of to uh, check or to evaluate whether students understand the content that was covered in the semester. Okay, so most of the lecturers do this to basically give exercise to students. But some students basically do not basically do not even have the courtesy of copying the solution that they have. So an example is given here. So these students basically just copy and paste everything. Okay, print, uh, you, uh, that student basically uh, print screen and then copy everything and put as his uh, submission for the assignment. Okay, so this is again a very, very poor uh, attitude from that particular student. Again, so basically all of his submission at that time basically based on the solution that basically he just copy and uh, paste uh, for his assignment. Okay. So this is something that you want to avoid. Okay. First, definitely you get zero. And secondly, uh, you can be brought to the discipl uh, disciplinary committee uh, because of this honesty. Okay. So please keep that in mind. Uh, all right, so for your responsibility, attendance and punctuality, uh, please make sure that you join the session. Uh, for the, for example, if we are having the, the uh, synchronous session, please join the session five minutes early. Attendance is compulsory. Okay. Uh, I expect students to participate in the course, uh, in the discussion. I know this is, uh, again, a hybrid session, meaning that uh, the lectures is online. But uh, to learn more or to learn well, you need to ask questions. Okay? So I expect participation from students. Uh, to do well again, of, uh, more often than not, you students who prepare well before the, uh, before the class will know what questions to ask and they tend to do well uh, in the course. Okay? So always read beforehand what will be covered in the class so that you can ask questions. Uh, put some effort. Uh, for example, I shared this now. Even though you have the solution, for example, put some effort uh, in copying the, the answer so that you learn by writing. Okay. Um, so, for example, if you cannot attend or you cannot submit any of this assessment for whatever reason, please discuss beforehand with your coordinator and lecturers. Okay? Please do not let your lecturers basically go find you if you uh, come in late for the test or if you don't submit any assessment, assessment because that's for me is a very very poor attitude okay so if you want to learn know that you want to learn okay please do not let lecturers uh, basically go after you okay for submission okay so for example uh, as i mentioned uh, earlier uh, we have test one and also uh, the industrial business lecturer, uh, which uh, basically will be conducted just before the midterm break. Okay. Those two events are compulsory. So if you cannot at, uh, attend for whatever reason, please make sure uh, you have, uh, you inform as well for whatever reason for us to consider. Okay. For example, if you are sick, uh, please provide medical certificate only from PKU Unimap, uh, 
medical uh, unit, uh, medical health center, Unimax Medical Health Center, or from the government agency. Okay? Uh, we tend not to accept uh, medical certificate from private clinics. Okay, so please keep that in mind. Right? A medical certificate is different from uh, the notice that you get if you went to see a doctor. So it's different. Some students, they confuse. Uh, they think by just submitting a, a simple document saying that uh, he or she went to see a doctor, that's, that is considered as medical certificate. No. Medical certificate will only be issued by doctors if you are not feeling well uh, under their discretion. discretion. Uh, time sleep. If I'm sleep, just a proof that you uh, to show that you went to see the doctor, but you, that's not considered as medical certificate. All right. So please make sure you uh, understand this. Uh, so basically, all in all, you are responsible for your own success. Okay. If you want to do well, put some effort, ask questions, um, put up, uh, go to the, uh, come to the tutorial sessions. Always give your efforts more than what is expected. You should do well. Okay, so I think we covered most of the items here that we plan. All right. Um, okay, so I think that's all uh, for me. Okay. So as our first class we will be on uh, Friday, we'll start with the introduction to thermodynamics two, um, and then in the Google classroom, uh, in one of the, my posts. Um, I ask you to have a look at the expectation in ethics, uh, but I think for your batch, uh, I already give this talk uh, beforehand, I think last semester or last year. So basically, if you already understand or if you still remember the content, this should be okay. All right. So um, I understand that uh, I've shared quite a few materials in the Google uh, platform. But that's not an excuse to say that you cannot find or you you miss some of the materials. Okay, so it's your job to to check the materials that were shared to ensure that uh, all the submissions or all the required items uh, are there. Okay, all right. So uh, have a look at the recap questions for term one, uh, which basically has been uploaded in Google Classroom. So I think that's all uh, from me for this first uh, briefing session for Thermodynamics 2. Uh, again, um, I welcome all students uh, who enroll in this course and hopefully we will have a good semester uh, together. So with that, uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to everyone.